Namaskar. Daily Global Insights, episode number 162 with Sri and Sri. Today is the 13th of May, a look at the events unfolding around the globe. In United States news, Biden administration stumbles on cyber attacks as gas prices grow, lift sanctions on overweight trucks on highways. So there is an update to this. I'm hearing that uh, the supply has resumed on that uh, pipeline, sir. The supply has resumed on the pipeline since uh, uh, yesterday night. Yes, that, that has happened. Uh, but to ease up the supplies, because close to 50%, 50% of the uh, supplies to East Coast uh, is reliant on this uh, colonial pipeline. Uh, so they were also lifted, uh, not only lifted the sanction on over, overweight trucks bringing in the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the gas or the crude to, uh, to the various uh, locations. They also have restricted uh, EPA restrictions they have. So we temporarily will go from green to red. Um, and um, and then you know uh, the uh, pipes will. The 13 states will, uh, at least six states will have uh, the opportunity to have uh, you know EPA restrictions lifted uh, during this particular period. And the United States Customs and Border Patrol revealed on Tuesday that there is a tenfold increase in border skirmishes to 178,000. Democratic Del Rio Mayor Blas Biden. So now even the Democrats are also getting uh, very nervous about this thing, right? Well, I think it's a community problem. It's a society uh, uh, problem. It's a security problem. Uh, when you have this wave of, wave of surge, there's neither the mechanism nor the funding uh, to support immediately. Of course, the, the COVID-19 relief programs have allocated budgets, but it hasn't been approved as yet. Uh, the latest wave hasn't been approved yet. But even if the money reaches the people, uh, there's still uh, logistical issues of locating this, uh, locating all of them and finding shelters. So clearly there's a problem that is brewing and it's a tenfold increase. It's not just one or two, it's a tenfold increase. It's another reflection that uh, this whole surge has been an abysmal failure, one of the big failures of the Biden first 100 days. Remember, uh, the lady uh, Vice President Kamala Harris was in charge, was put in charge of the border, and she's yet to visit the border, or she's yet to make a statement around the issues surrounding the border. And national security threats overwhelm Biden administration. Now we have had such problems even leading up to the election. So I think those threats have not diminished; rather, they have escalated, haven't they? They have. Uh, if this. Uh, a ransomware attack is uh, anything that uh, is being spoken about on the initial discovery process, uh, namely that it is emanating from dark side somewhere in Eastern Europe, not directly Russian. Uh, and you can expect more such attacks emanating because they have to do with money and ransom. So you have non-government rogue actors involved in this. Then you all already have issues either from Russia or from China. Uh, which is targeting specific areas of the infrastructure. So you have these domestic issues, plus you also have all these riots that still has not ceased in many of the cities. Uh, then you have border surges where people are just coming in, and they're not coming in from one country, they're probably coming in from 30 to 40 countries. Some of them are escaping the scanner. So there is an overall uh, surge or overall uh, growth in the uh, in these uh, people coming into the country who can potentially be uh, national security threats. Naturally, the uh, Biden's o administration is overwhelmed as a result of that. And massive relief programs have opened the door to fraud, spike in identity theft on expected lines. We 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 I think predicted this. We said that if there's going to be so much money sloshing about in the system, there is going to be abuse, isn't it? Uh, there's going to be abuse. Um, we talked yesterday about on the privacy side uh, around the U.S. Postal Service being monitored. They're act actively tracking. Uh, when you have relief programs, which is uh, not just directed to citizens based on uh, known verifiable and identif identification factors such as your social security uh, and other, uh, you know, even drivers, uh, some form of mechanism by which you can identify these people, long-term unemployed, unemployed, those who have registered. But you have a whole surge of people now who have come in. All of them are going to be qualified for 
this uh, this relief and aid. These new immigrants, as they're called, you know, mostly illegal uh, aliens who have made it through the border, or the new aliens or new immigrants uh, or aspiring immigrants. Uh, you know, how do you track and how do you monitor and how do you make sure that uh, that these people are validated? There's no duplicity. And nor there is, uh, you know, skimming that is going on as a result of the allocation. So we have a problem. This is a mess of their own making. And I cannot use words to describe what the Biden administration has done. Whoever it is that they were trying to please God, they have really left a mess in their hands. I just hope that they can, they are capable or they are competent enough to fix this thing and fix it soon. Um, senators introducing bill forcing colleges to disclose ties to Be Beijing. That is finally happening. I'm so pleased because we have all heard about what Mike Pompeo had said and others had said about Chinese funding in many popular universities, isn't it, sir? It is. I think that Mike Pompeo's number was around somewhere between 4.5 to $5 billion of, over a period of 10 years uh, through endowments have reached even universities such as Yale, Harvard, MIT, Georgetown, uh, etc. And um, his view was that this money is being used effectively uh, to control the narrative and, uh, and also to change the narrative, um, you know, in the mindset of the people. And um, this is what his uh, alleged statement is. Whether it is the case, we don't know. But what we do, what we do know is that, as you saw, as we saw in the case of Wuhan, many of the professors, quite a few of them, seems to be compromised, or maybe even students are compromised who partake in some of these IP violations and research, uh, especially around uh, activities around bio warfare and bio, um, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the work that went on in uh, Wuhan with connections to United States, uh, slowly the evidence is uh, coming out. Sir, I have read somewhere that all the top Chinese leaders' children are studying in Ivy League schools in the United States. Yes, Mr. Xi Jinping's daughter herself, uh, is in Harvard. She is very, very protected, and so most of this, most of these kids study here. They get exposure. They get to know. They know who the people are. They, you know, it's a great information repository. And none of these people are going to quit CCP. They go back. They become the next set of leaders. So they're well trained, well lynched. They know the people, uh, and you know, in a natural way, they uh, socialize uh, into the into the uh, into the architecture and fabric of the U.S. society. And Republicans propose firing Fauci amid rising discontent. Now, this has been happening for a while now. So, what is the new thing that has prompted the Republicans to demand his resignation, sir? Uh, the two things that has prompted them: first and foremost, these variants which are coming out, and they're being called as. India variant, Brazil variant, UK variant, South African variant, and you know, so many variants, uh, probably very soon we'll have Japanese variant. Uh, their discontent stems from the fact that Fauci is supposed to have monitored and should be well aware of the various manifestations of this COVID that is likely to emanate uh, as a result of the initial observations that come out. So we are all caught by surprise, and most of these variants are making their way into various countries and some of them more harmful than the others. And as the data discovery process goes, um, and there's a potential threat that uh, many of them could make its way by virtue of travels and tours uh, into various countries in the world, notably United States. United States is a big destination. So they're saying, what the hell you have been doing? You're supposed to be, you haven't given the answers. You keep saying that, you know, we are at the end of the epidemic, but that doesn't seem to be the case based, based on the way things are spreading around the world. That's where the big discontent is. And in Indian news, uh, referring to B.1.617 strain as an Indian variant, variant is baseless. In fact, uh, P. Gurus and, and my, my myself had uh, tweeted it out, calling out the Indian mainstream media to say you have to get your facts right. It is not an Indian variant. It is a variant one of the variants in India that is a cause for concern. So that's what the WHO report had said. CNBC had reported it correctly, but Indian media being Indian media, they chose to put their own interpretation on it. I'm glad that now the air has been cleared. The health ministry also issued a clarification. Sir, your thoughts? My thoughts are, I think that 
uh, we read this out in terms of uh, the difference between a B.1.617 versus B.1.618. Uh, 618 is the triple mutant um, and 617 is the double mutant. Um, and Dr. Uh, Maria uh, Vashkova, was, uh, who is the WHO rep, had never made any reference to India and she just basically said they are observing this double variant, it is highly transmittable uh, and, you know, it is uh, more hazardous than the other things that they have seen. That's all her comment was. She never mentioned India. Um, and I think this, it is the CNBC reporter who picked this tweet and tweeted uh, by combining one sentence of hers with the another sentence of hers. She said, hey, you know, the triple mutant variant is now in India. Therefore, India is, that virus is dangerous and potential uh, hazard for the rest of the world emanating from India. Now, 150,000 DRDO developed OxyCare systems are going to be procured under the PM Cares program. What do these OxyCare systems do, sir? The OxyCare systems are those which help to regulate the flow of, uh, re sorry, regulate the flow of um, um, the oxygen that is coming out, the auxiliary oxygen support that comes in. Um, it regulates the flow and accordingly calibrates the amount of oxygen. So in other words, if your level reaches 94 or if your level reaches 87, your level reaches 80, which is the relative threshold of oxygen flowing through your system, then it is able to monitor and extract from the, uh, the auxiliary uh, cylinders that are available and uh, you know, make sure that your body is receiving uh, the right supply of oxygen in a very efficient manner. I think it's a great uh, development that is happening in India. And South Bangalore my Member of Parliament Tejasvi Surya's appeal to top tech team to fix the BBMP bed management system is being fixed in 100 hours. That was what he had requested the companies to do. Many of these companies, you will remember, are all headquartered in and around the South Bengaluru constituency. So I'm glad that the tech companies have responded, sir. Indeed, I think, uh, you know, my dear friend, Mr. Mohan Das Pai would say we have 5 million engineers. Nowhere in the world you have, you can get so many. So, and this is right in the uh, citadel of uh, India, so Bangalore. So they all have stepped up and uh, seems to have addressed the issue and the systems are back on track because there are some complications which is around people looking for beds and when actually beds were available, it was showing them as unavailable. Indian government takes steps to ramp up availability of amphotericin B to fight a rare fungal disease, a post-COVID complication. Now, this is very worrisome because of what it can do to the human body, isn't it, sir? It is. And um, these are the collateral consequences emanating from post-COVID uh, recovery process. Um, it is worrisome. At least India seems to be a little bit ahead of the game. And this medication not only treats the uh, the, the, the fungal infection, but potentially mitigates any heart, cancer, any other type of disease. People who are with uh, diabetic heart diseases are extremely vulnerable to catch this fungal infection. Now, these are the types of things that the Republicans are worried about and uh, firing Dr. Fauci as well, which is to say, we don't have a total picture and that's what your job is. You are a scientist and scientists come doctors. So you, this, this is what you're supposed to be uh, doing rather than, you know, trying to manage a project of vaccination. Modi government approves 18,000 crore PLI scheme to develop domestic production of advanced chemical battery storage. So these are like what, lithium, lithium ion hydride uh, batteries, sir? Yes, these are batteries, but little more uh, higher in capacity can be used for your computers, can be used for your limited lighting, can be used for, uh, you know, your television, any of those things. Um, I think it's a phenomenal development. This is another a targeted PLI program where investments are being sought to develop these things indigenously at a much lower cost. So it is able to, it can reach a vast cross section of the people. I think this is one of the great initiatives, very similar to those air conditioners, LED bulbs, uh, televisions, you know, the whole raft of gear, which is consumed locally by zillions of people in India. India is not allowing uh, Huawei in 5G trials is a sovereign issue. That is an India issue, says one U.S. official. I'm wondering what prompted this U.S. official to issue this uh, uh, notification, sir? Well, I think there's a whole wrap, there's a whole thing around the 5G. 
um, it is conceivable that uh, a comment was asked of the uh, um, the uh, the uh, secretary of the department of uh, the, 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 whole, the secretary of state was asked. One of the officials have responded to that uh, question to um, the secretary of state, uh, basically saying that, look, you know, it's a sovereign issue and India is dealing with it. And if Huawei is uh, left out, Huawei is left out. Bad luck. And in global news, Pelosi says Israel has the right to defend itself against Hamas attacks and risks loss of more lives. And this is now uh, Congresswoman Pelosi breaking ranks with the squad, which has been tweeting the exact opposite, sir. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes people, uh, you know, tend to overreach. Um, Israel has had equal support from Democrats and Republicans, and Israel has been an ally. Now, when you fire rockets into civil civilian areas, which causes damage, then you know it is it calls for response. So Pelosi is saying uh, we're not going to get into the broad ethos of the Palestine-Israel issue. It's just simply the specific actions which triggered response. Nancy Pelosi is saying that uh, you know this is unwarranted, and Israel has the right to defend itself and to also make sure that there's minimum loss of lives. And violence spreads to New York, Biden to send officials to Israel to de-escalate. What is this uh, going to achieve? I mean, neither side is going to be listening. I mean, this is going to be like a leading towards a war. I'm wondering what a Biden team would do, sir. What are your thoughts? Now, my thoughts are just to, again, go back to your previous question, which I probably didn't respond. You saw that yesterday we had already covered this, which is to say that, you know, um, people called it as an unwarranted attack. And Ilman stood up and basically said, you know, Israelis are terrorists and they are launching to, you know, these attacks against common people. So you could see this initial manifestation of the ruffle, which is what, uh, Sriji, you are ref referring to. Um, we saw yesterday just in Manhattan, one couple of blocks from where I live, uh, you know, the clashes and skirmishes between uh, Israeli and Palestinian supporters as they were uh, protesting in front of the Israeli embassy. Um, and so there seems to be a broad um, set of simmering issues that has been kept in the back burner, is back on the surface. Uh, this is, again, one of the national security issues that we were alluding to. And Biden says that he's going to send a bunch of officials to talk to Palestinians and uh, from uh, Secretary of State's office or State Department uh, to de-escalate. I'm not sure whether there's anything that is feasible on de-escalation. He'll come back, report, and, you know, this thing will go on. IDF has announced that they have neutralized top two Hamas leaders. The IDF is Israeli Defense Force, I think. Um, so the, the Hamas is also taking on a lot of uh, losses now. Yes, I think there's a whole bunch of people who lost their life. If I remember his name correct, is Bashir Asami, uh, the top uh, Hamas militant leader or commander was taken, along with other set of leaders. But he is the biggest one since 2014 when uh, Israel, uh, you know, uh, uh, made, its, uh, made its attacks. Uh, sorry, Israel took out some of these people in response to uh, the attacks uh, on the civil territory, civilian territories. And Senate Republicans warn business groups against Iran engagement. So are they saying that it is too early to go back and engage with Iran or are they saying don't even go there? They're basically saying be careful. If there are uh, businesses that has association with Iran directly or indirectly, be careful. And, you know, the sanctions have not gone away. Um, and the um, I know Biden administration is negotiating, but there's a lot more river to a lot more water to flow under the bridge before things normalize. And until such time, you know, uh, stay away. Iran responds to U.S. overtures with gunboat reception. That was not expected. They were supposed to be playing nice. Uh, what happened in the Hormuz uh, Strait, sir? Well, there's now these little, little, um, you know, gunboats which are coming in and firing at the U.S. Navy, uh, the naval ships. And now, why they're doing it, uh, whether it is a, a deliberate provocation to, for, uh, un, you know, what you call disproportionate response from the Navy and to create a situation in the region, we don't know, but clearly there has been problems and we have been reporting every day these problems. The latest incursion is 
Previously, there was an unwarranted maneuver that we talked about, then some of them taking a pop shots. And then we also reported about an Iranian, Iranian type a ship that is an unknown ship, which seems like Iranian, carrying a whole cache of weaponry to the Houthis in Yemen. So today we have the gunboats popping up and taking shots at the uh, U.S. Navy. And Taliban captured key district near Afghan capital, over 200 blasts and 15 suicide attacks since April 13th have killed over 255 people and injured 500 plus. Clearly, Taliban has a plan to try and uh, take over as much as Afghanistan as possible, which kind of calls for calls into question uh, President, President Biden's claim that he's going to have all the troops out by 9-11. I think this is going to be something that he's going to walk back. What are your thoughts, sir? Uh, well, certainly when you look at the magnitude of numbers, it's self-explanatory. They took out the school and the kids uh, just about a couple of three days ago. Uh, 55 or 58 kids lost their lives. You know, Afghan is, is not a resolvable problem. It requires almost like a permanent deterrent and that only happens when you have a permanent occupation by uh, asymmetric forces to take on, uh, asymmetric forces by strength to take on the Taliban. Otherwise, everything is going to fold up. And the United States calls Xinjiang open air prison decries religious persecution in the State Department report. So this is a State Department report that is now calling out Xinjiang and the Uyghurs, isn't it? Indeed, I think we have seen one after the other, and we were waiting for what the response of uh, uh, the Biden administration is. Now, the State Department has released its report. We, they call it as a religious persecution, uh, and it's a willful and deliberate religious persecution, which is not acceptable to United States. So, therefore, I think that report endorses all these are required as part of the protocol and procedure in case China, in case United States decides to take specific actions in concert with other allies and countries. And in markets, CPI, that is Consumer Price in Index, I think, CPI? Yeah. Consumer uh, Price Index, that is inflation rises to 4. Inflation 2. rises to 4.2% and oil now touches $66. Consumers fear worst inflation in many, many years. Sir, is this because of too much money in the system or are there other factors also? I think it's a too much money in the system. Um, when you pump so much money in the system in an asymmetric manner, uh, you begin to find money floating around. Um, to, to a great extent, the Fed also misread the situation. I won't use the word misled, but misled. Uh, it is policies which can mislead um, uh, your Fed, which it should not, it should stay firm. Then you have, um, you have now a situation, we still have more liquidity coming into the, into the we still have uh, the infrastructure stimulus not yet passed. We only still did the January, uh, you know, December, Jan December, January uh, stimulus. Uh, then we have been releasing funds for the Chi America Child Relief Plan, that's the $1.8 uh, trillion. So parts of it is getting released. So there is money all over the place. And when you have money, because you can't have a discrimination, so you have a set of people who don't qualify, a set of people who qualify, and within the set of people who qualify, those who need more and those who don't need much um, are present. So those who, deem, those who don't need, they get the money, that's going to be thrown into the system. So this is what is triggering uh, and also United States is not used to this swagger of capital in a short span of time. We did four and a half trillion dollars last year and we are contemplating to put another six trillion dollars of which only two trillion dollars, somewhere close to two trillion dollars has now made its way. Uh, we have another three to uh, four trillion dollars to come in. So inflation as predicted has uh, raised its head. The Fed has basically indicated hey, you know, uh, I will not do anything until such time that there is a deeper penetration on the labor market in terms of the long-term unemployed in certain sections of the society. But I think that the inflation is going to go well past um, and they may be forced to take action. So this is where the policy differences are. If we go back in time to 2019, 
you remember the base rate is around 2% of uh, inflation. When it's touched 2.25, 2.4, 3%, immediately at that point of time, Jerome Powell raised the rates and, uh, and, and, and President Trump, you know, intervened. And that resulted in the recalibration. And we saw 2020, uh, then the Cairo crisis come in and they managed this out. We have here 4.2% inflation and there's no intervention we are still at zero percent and plenty of liquidity and that brings us to a close for today's segment please consider subscribing to our channel and also join our membership and Sidharji, namaskar and see you tomorrow bright and early namaskar and again i would like to echo the sentiments of uh, shriji you know please join subscribe and we count on your patronage in terms of uh, you know, your support to continue to uh, run, you know, quality programs.